Hi, I'm Jacob. We're so happy you're here with us. We're just a few minutes away from beginning our service. We'd love to know where you're watching from or how we can pray for you. So please let us know in the comments and be sure to share this content with your friends. If you want prayer or prophetic encouragement, we offer free ministry available on first come, first serve basis on our website. Be sure to check the description of this video for more information. Thank you so much for being here with us again, and we hope to see you again soon. Here's a word from some of our other ministries. Hey everybody, it's Pastor David Kingsley reminding you, this week is The Pulse. Every third Friday at 6.30, come on out. Have your expectation ready. Remember, faith is the substance of things hoped for. Wherever you're expecting is where your faith is going. See everybody this Friday. Shalom. Do you want to see God heal through you? Join us for an upcoming weekend training to be equipped, trained, and commissioned to join our healing teams here at the Healing Rooms in Santa Maria. This local two-day in-person seminar will be jam-packed with teachings, Q&A, and activation, so you'll be confident to minister God's healing here on a healing team. To learn more about this training, please look at the description below. We look forward to seeing you there. As disciples of Jesus, it's vital that we study God's Word and start activating it in our daily lives. I'd like to invite you to Equip Nights, where our goal is to equip you for a life of impact and purpose. We're going to be diving into key subjects like your new identity, your authority in Christ, and the power of prayer, and many more. With the help of qualified teachers and an amazing course book, you're going to see some real results. These courses will be five sessions long, taking place once a week during the evenings, making them accessible for those who are working. For more information, please check out the description link below. Are you ready to change the culture of your marriage? We'd love to have you at the next set of Bridge Marriage Trucks. And it's not just for troubled marriages, it's for hurting to healthy and everyone in between. Also, for singles, dating, and engaged couples mm -hmm. who just want to learn about marriage from a biblical perspective. We would love to see you guys there. Yep. How's everyone doing? I'm great. <laughs> How's everyone doing? Totally there awesome. There we go. There we go. Thank you, Jesus, for tonight. Thank you for your presence that's with us. Always, we welcome you into this sanctuary. Lord, that you would get the glory here at the healing rooms. And Lord, that you would minister to your people and that we would minister to you as your children. And Lord, let the spirit of freedom be here because he whom the Son sets free is free indeed. And let our hearts, Lord, be open to you. I pray the Holy Spirit, you do a work in us. Communicate your word to us, Lord. Speak to us in the areas of our life, Lord, when we need it. Lord, we just open up our hearts to you, Lord, just to receive, to receive from you and to minister to you in that place of true worship in spirit and in truth. We love you so much, Jesus. We love you.
since we don't have keyboard, we got to get used to feeling the Holy Spirit without a pad, you know? Who else would rocks cry out to worship? Whose glory taught the stars to shine?
times we can worship the Lord without the lyrics of a known song but we can just really sing our heart and I encourage us in these times it might feel a little bit strange I'm not sure everyone's in a different place of comfortability with this but just use this as an opportunity to exercise a muscle and sometimes it's like a muscle if you don't exercise it, it becomes kind of weak or feels eh. but just practice singing your heart to the Lord make make your own heart like that's why David always says in the Psalms, he's like, oh my soul, bless the Lord. Oh my, he's, tell, he's talking to himself. He's talking, his soul is his personality and his emotions. And he's like, listen, you might not feel like it, but oh my soul, sing, sing to the Lord. And then also this is a time to receive and listen. So wherever you're at with that, just, you know, I, I know you, um, you come here to, to meet the Lord, but it's one thing to just come into the room and it's another thing to engage in our heart and to say, I'm bringing my sacrifice. I'm not gonna let the worship team, they're gonna do theirs, but I'm gonna offer my sacrifice. I'm gonna sing my heart. So in this time, just let your heart just like rise like incense to the Lord.
intercession for his bride that his bride would know her identity and his bride would rise up and sing in these days when deep darkness covers the world that his bride would arise and shine for her light has come the glory of the Lord rises upon her in every nation when deep darkness covers the earth his bride arises and shines Lord we ask you in Jesus name that you would infuse courage in the heart of your bride here in America and in the nations of the world, Lord, every single nation, Lord, no matter how hopeless the situation, no matter how difficult the government is, Lord, we ask you for that rising up in praise and in worship like incense, beautiful incense to you, Lord, from every nation. Lord, minister to the heart of your church right now. Give them courage, Lord, to rise up, to take a stand in worship. Lord, this is your Lord, this is your inheritance. Nothing less. Nothing less. Oh, there's so many, Lord, who haven't heard. So many who haven't tasted and seen. So many, Lord, who are hungry and searching, lost. Lord, I ask you, reveal yourself to them. Let them become your bride. Let them rise up in your glory. You said, look to the fields. The harvest is ripe, but the workers are few. So Lord, Lord of the harvest, send out laborers into your harvest field. In the name of Jesus, send out laborers in Jesus' name into every harvest field. Send out laborers, Lord. People who will lay down their life, Lord. People who will say yes to that call, wherever it is, Lord. Touch the heart of your bride, Lord. It's really, Lord, you're worthy of it. Singing, never 
ceasing Day and night will be praising you Ever living Interceding That your bride may be one With you
Oh 
This is why I sing. This is why I worship. I'm connecting with heaven intentionally as for me and my house, me and my family, that we would serve the Lord, that his glory would rest in our home, but not just our home, that where we live would be a resting place of his glory and that families all around the world would catch that and that the Lord would answer the cry of his people for God to come dwell with us that we would not be satisfied with ministry as it is, but that the glory of God would dwell among his people. This is the high call. This is the high vision. We mustn't settle for less. We cannot settle for less. The Lord is calling his church up and inward into this reality. Will we answer? Will we say yes? This next generation is tired of the way things are. They don't care, but they care when they feel the glory and the love and the power of the Holy God who loves them and who has set them apart. They care when they see people walk out of wheelchairs, when their family members are healed from cancer. They care. We can't keep people out of the church when the glory of God comes and fills the temple as he longs to fill it. Will we be willing to say, yes, Lord, be it done unto me, be it done unto us according to your word? Oh, Lord, this is our cry. This is our longing. Come and fill your temple with glory. Fill your temple with glory, O oh Lord. Our hearts are so hungry. Our hearts are thirsty. Yes, Lord. Let a fresh wind blow through your church. Let a fresh wind blow through our hearts to wake us up, Lord, wherever we're slumbering, wherever we're sleepy, but wherever we don't want you, wherever we're content, breathe on us, Holy Spirit. Awaken us. Let us return to our first love. And what is our first love except for you? It's you. You're our first love. And your glory is what we desire. Come and fill your temple with glory, Lord. Fill your temple with glory, Lord.
How many of you seen tonight the door standing open in heaven? You know, we are learning to ask the Lord to show us what is happening in the spirit all around us as we come together and as we worship together. And I saw a large angel at each corner in the back and in the front. At each corner, I saw angels tonight, large angels. And then there was a swirl of angels right up in this area right here. They were circling uh, um, uh, in this area right here. There's activity, there's heavenly activity happening as we've been worshiping tonight. Something is moving, something is shaking, something is taking place on the Central Coast as we are together worshiping Him in, in spirit and in truth. And so Lord, we acknowledge what you're doing right now. Lord, we thank you, Lord, that the heavens are open. And our prayer is, Lord, let your kingdom come. Lord, let your will be done here in Santa Maria as it is in heaven. Lord, we pray this in the name of Jesus. Lord, we thank you, Lord, for the angels are here on assignment, sent by you for a time such as this. We welcome heaven, the atmosphere of heaven in this place tonight. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Father. You know, at the beginning of worship, for some reason, I was really distracted in my mind, and I said, Lord, I want to focus on you. So I just opened up my Bible, and I read part of Revelation chapter 4, and then Daniel 7, and Ezekiel 10, and back to Revelation 15, and just getting my mind focused on one who sits on the throne. And and then you were singing about the throne and talking about this and God wants us to focus on him as the one who sits on the throne and we're not just singing in the air I know we know this but sometimes it's good to purposefully focus on the throne room what's going on there right this second we might be here but we're joining with one family in heaven on earth and we're worshiping him who sits on the throne and and then it's just amazing and it shifted everything and I can just focus so anyway so good. Yeah, yeah, just a second. You know, in this new season, we're in that place where we don't want to come and just uh, have predictable meetings, but we want to be led by the Spirit every time we gather. When it gets pre predictable, I mean, it's just like, to me, that becomes boring. <laughs> you know, we want it to be unpredictable. And so, Lord, what are you doing tonight? What are you saying tonight? We just want to thank you, Lord, for what, you're, what you've done, what you're doing, and what you're about to do. In Jesus' name. Papa and Joyce Gill has some friends with them here tonight. Uh, Steve and, and Rosemary. David, Davis. Yeah, and they're a part of Bill Hammond's ministry for 25 years, and they just so happened to be here with us tonight. And I asked Papa Gil to ask him if, if the Lord has a word that they would like to share, because we sure want to hear it. If God's given you a word for us corporately or for any individual here, we want to hear what the Lord is saying. So if you want to come up, I don't know if you'd rather come up on the stage. It's probably right here, is that good? Do you think? Oh, maybe, no. Well, okay. Is that okay for the camera? Let me laugh because, because the Lord was telling me there's been a lot of religious opposition yeah. to your mission lately. But I saw the Lord named Lord Sabaoth, captain of the host of heaven's armies, loosing angel armies here today. So when I heard Rick come and say about the angels here and the angels there, I'm telling you, the host of heaven's armies is loosing angels. And you're going to see creative miracles begin to happen like never before. But it's not just going to be here. It's going to be out there. 
And God's going to invade his house. God's going to invade his house. The Lord says, listen, I am waking up my church. I am bringing an awakening in my house. I am bringing awakening in my people. No more dormancy, normalcy, no more normal. God says, this is a time of supernatural breakthrough. You will see me move in 2022 where the enemy came in the last two years and tried to stop everything I'm doing. I'm about to double and increase my glory, my power, my anointing. Anointing, and America will be saved. People will be changed. And the Lord told me a while back when that dam was going to break up in Oroville and they evacuated 200,000 people. He said, I'm going to send my living water across the land and 200 million in America will be saved. And I said, God, how can that be? Like the prophet, what about these dead, dry bones? And he said, and I said, do you, what do you don't think I can do it? I said, just like he said, God, you know. So we need to stand for this nation and we need to say we are in agreement with heaven's armies and we will fight from a place of victory. Yeah. Not for the victory. We, he, Jesus said it's finished. He won the battle. He gave them the promised land, but they had to go in. It, he said, I will fight, but they were in doubt and unbelief. And I want to say it's kind of the same today. For every 12 people, 12 leaders that went into the land, only two believed. And it's, uh, things are happening like that. I've heard like 52% of the church think it's okay for abortion. 72% think same-sex marriage is okay. This is, they say to the church, but this is a remnant church. Now, I'm not saying church because it's not. This is a house of the remnant to come and be transformed and conformed. I heard the worship leader. You know the highest calling you could ever have? Not to be the great apostle, great prophet, great evangelist. It's to be conformed into the image of Christ. And it's Christ in us, the hope of glory. And so we are being conformed and we are going through the process and everything is working for our good. Everything is not good, but he said it will work for our good if we love him. Amen. And he said in everything give thanks. He didn't say for everything give thanks. Because when you thank him in this situation, you say, God, I trust you. No matter what happens, I trust you. Amen. And that's where we're at. Trust in the Lord Amen. with all your heart. Yeah. Then say trust in the government. But we are a government. We are a government. We are a legislative people that have more authority because we have the kingdom of God and it's higher than the kingdom of man. So we got to start legislating. I love you. God bless you. Let me give you my beautiful bride. Well, we were singing, giving glory to God. The Lord showed me what our spirit man looks like. And I saw it all it was gold and i said and the lord would say to my church i have covered you i have engulfed you with my glory and then i saw the hand of the lord and there was a ring in his hand and he said just like i covenant with mo with noah uh, to with the rainbow to never destroy the earth again with a flood he said i covenant with you he showed me the ring it's a covenant ring that he's given us to pour my glory out and i'm hearing the lord say so arise my church and shine for surely it is a dark time and it will get darker but that glory that has been resident on the inside i just saw it just coming through and shining and i heard the lord say it's time for my church to jump as a little child jump into the river and begin to swim in my glory begin to swim in my anointing uh, begin to swim in my power because as you do that says the lord you will come up with miraculous healing power you will be transformed into my image and my likeness says the lord of hosts amen how many, how many received that? <clears throat> Man, so, so good. Thank you. We do receive that. Yes. Thank you. 
So most of you know that next week, next Monday night at this time, yay, we're starting our five-day prayer strike. So it's going to start next Monday at 6 with worship and a word and prayer, and then Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, the same schedule, 9.30 to noon, intercession in this room, and that will not be streamed because I just want to keep it like that private holy place between us and the Lord, and there's a time for streaming, which we usually do, but the morning session is just going to be a, um, just an intercession, just in the Holy of Holies, and then from noon, I mean not noon, um, two to four, uh, worship, and a brief maybe 15-minute sharing, we have different people every day, and then more intercession, and then the evening will be kind of conference, more conference style, so we're really expecting the Lord to come and just I was going to say begin, but he's already begun. Continue what he's begun. And I've been reading a lot about revivals lately and about prayer. And just, um, you know, every, you guys know this. Every revival that's recorded always has been birthed in intercession. Like there's the time of intercession and then revival comes. So this is like the, the continued preparation to ask God just to come. Just like I said last week, we do our part. We come before him. We ask him to come and to fill us first. This place, this city, this region, our state, our nation. And then he does his part and he hears the cry of our heart that he put in us and he comes and answers. So next week is just going to be a time of just seeking him, asking him, and then waiting to see what he'll do. And I believe he's going to do some things next week. But what he's going to do is after next week. It's not like, I keep saying, it's not like the week of weeks next week. But it's preparation, preparing us as his bride. So, And then we have a marriage seminar in March and a healing rooms training also. Just different things coming up. You can check out our website to find out about those. Want me to pray for you? Sure. I'll take I'll <laughs> so, Lord, I, I pray for Rick as you've been speaking to him, and I ask, Lord, that you would fill him just afresh right this moment, just in this moment, on this Valentine's Day, that you would fill your beloved with your heart and with your love and with your words. I ask that you would overwhelm him like you never have before, that you would encompass him with your spirit and that your words will flow out of him. So I thank you for your anointing. And we just release it in Jesus' name. Amen. Thank you. My Valentine right there. Yeah. You know, this. Uh, we're really excited about this event, this 222. The word has gotten out, and I've heard there are people coming from all different states around the United States, different places are coming. Uh, there's some people come from Canada, and there's some, I heard there's somebody coming from Sweden, just for this event, and who knows where else. Uh, you know, you know uh, it's a place where the hungry gather, and that's where Jesus likes to be. How many of you know that? That's where he wants to be, in the midst of those that really hunger after him. And so we're really excited. And you know, this, uh, I just want to do a little recap, you know, at the uh, beginning of the year, uh, between uh, Christmas and New Year's, you know, I've, I always ask the Lord, what are you saying in this new year? What is your message for us uh, as a ministry, but also as the church at, uh, at large uh, on the Central Coast? And, uh, and I ask the Lord uh, for a, a dream. I'm not a dreamer. You know, the Bible says that young men will have visions. I see visions. You know, old men will dream dreams. <clears throat> I, I, I may have graduated. I don't know. Uh, but uh, anyway, we were up in the mountains. We're up at June Lake's about 8,000 feet on the backside of Yosemite near, near Mammoth. And uh, we were in the midst of a, a blizzard, a snowstorm. And, uh, but that night, as I asked the Lord to give me a dream, when I normally don't dream, I get a dream. Uh, but it wasn't a, a visual dream, it was an audio dream. And so I'm, I'm assuming it was a dream, maybe it was just the Lord speaking, I don't know. Because uh, I never really quite had an experience like this. But the Lord said to me, he said this, tell them that we're leaving an old season, we're exiting an old season, and we're entering into a brand new season. And uh, he said that this uh, season we're entering into is not an extension of the last season and that we need to, uh, to, in, to, in order to move into the new season, we have to let go of everything in the past season, everything bad and everything good. And so uh, and I'm hearing this. I'm hearing the voice of the Lord speak to me. And he said, tell them this is a season of the betrothal and the bride. 
And I hear this, I hear this, it wakes me up, and I, and I, I remembered it. It, was so, it, it startled me so much because I don't think that way. And I got up early that next morning, I began to write down what the Lord has said uh, to me. And he gave me some scriptures to go along with that. You can, watch, you can watch the message, the first message of the year on our archive. But I believe I have 100% confidence that this was the word of the Lord for us because I heard it. I heard the voice of the Lord saying, tell them. And uh, so anyway, uh, uh, he gave me some scriptures and out of Hosea verses 2, I mean chapter 2 verses 19 through I think it's 24, uh, that Jesus is in different ways he's betrothing us in, in righteousness, in justice, in faithfulness, in love, all these ways he's betrothing us. Uh, and that all has to do with 2022. Uh, and uh, in Exodus 20, 22, uh, he, he, he told us, you know, the, 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 Lord, the Lord said to Moses, uh, tell them this, uh, that I'm going to show them that they've heard from me from heaven. And the Lord said, I'm going to begin to speak from heaven. And the Lord said that we're, he's going to give us ears to hear, eyes to see, and a tongue to, to declare what, he is, what we are hearing and what we're seeing from him. And he said, get ready because dreams are on the increase. The gift of word of knowledge is on the increase. The prophetic gifting is on the increase. All these things that has to do with seeing, uh, is God is taken to a whole new level in this season. So get ready. And since then, we've been having people in our, our midst, in a, a part of our staff, that normally don't dream been having dreams, uh, really significant prophetic dreams. And, and people are seeing visions that normally don't see visions. And, and I want to tell you something. The Lord says you have to step into it in this new season. You've got to leave the old behind. You've got to cross over and step into the new season. And uh, it's, it's not going to be an automatic. It's not just going to come upon you. But if you choose to leave the past in the, in the past and step over the line into a new season, the Lord says, I'm going to betroth you. I'm going to prepare you as, as you're preparing yourself for me. And, uh, and some of these are the things that are happening. Then he showed us also in, in 2 Chronicles 20, 22. He says, our worship is going to a new level, and our worship is going to defeat our enemies. And even as David was, was just preaching while he was, while he was uh, uh, leading worship tonight, I believe that is right. We're going to see breakthroughs during worship. It's going to happen do, during worship. It's not going to necessarily happen through times of intercession, although we value intercession. But there's something about our worship. The Lord is coming upon the worship. And, and, and our worship is going to defeat our enemies. I, I don't want to preach the old message, but I'm going to just tell you, i got to, I got to recap. i got to remind you what God was saying to us. And then in John 20, 22, uh, uh, it's when, when Jesus breathed on them and said, receive the Holy Spirit. Remember that? And there's a fresh movement of the Holy Spirit that's coming upon us in, the, in this season. There's a new empowering, a new Im immersing of his glory and, and his anointing that's going to fall upon the church. Anyway, that's just a little recap of what God was saying to us and this year. And I'm not going to forget it. It's not a one-time message and then let's go on to something else. This is something we have to walk out, you guys. It's for us, but I believe it's for the body of Christ here on the central coast of California. And so I'm asking the Lord to give me more uh, on these things, you know, that he's showing me. And, um, and so I just want to go just a little bit further uh, tonight. What I believe the Lord is speaking to me today uh, um, for us to hear. Is that okay? <laughs> you know, what the Lord was showing me today is that, that Jesus, the bridegroom, has a gift for his bride. And it's a great gift. It's the best gift that the bridegroom could, could possibly give the bride, his bride, us. And um, you guys want to know what that is? <laughs> but also, there is two things happening right now in this season that we're in, this new season that we're in. He told me there's two things happening. Um, and one is the kingdom of heaven is coming down. And at the same time, there are streams of living water that are coming up. So there's things in the kingdom, there's things in the spirit that are coming down. Like tonight, there, there was an open heaven and I saw the angels. Things were coming down. But God is about to open up an artesian well here on the central coast. It's going to spring up and bubble up. And the two are going to meet. 
And get ready, there's gonna be explosive power when, when these two things happen. It's already beginning to happen. We're already beginning to sense uh, the trickle effect, but get ready for a mighty move of God. How many want that? <laughs> The gift that the Lord wants to give his bride, you guys, is the gift of the Holy Spirit. What an amazing gift. How many know it's Jesus' to give? The Bible tells us that he's the baptizer of the Holy Spirit. You remember John said, you know, I baptize with water, water for forgiveness of sins, but there's one coming after me who is greater than I am, and I'm not even worthy to untie his sandals, but he will baptize you in the Holy Spirit and fire. And Jesus is the baptizer. And Jesus wants to give us, now we have already have it, a portion of that. We don't have the full measure of it yet, but I believe this is the season where we can walk in the fullness, the full measure of the gift of God that Jesus wants to give us right now. How many believe that? So why, why is this the best gift that Jesus can give his bride? First of all, we, all, we know it is a gift, Right? Remember Jesus said before he ascended into heaven, he says, wait for the gift my, my father promised. He said, John baptized with the water, but in a few, few days you'll be baptized in the Holy Spirit. And so why is this the best gift Jesus can give his bride? And it's, and it's because it makes us like him. How many know that he wants us to reflect his beauty, to reflect his glory, to perfect, to reflect his light. And again, as we behold him, we take on his image and we begin to reflect who he is. But also, we know that Jesus was empowered by the Holy Spirit and it was his as a gift to give to us. You know, and I love what Jesus used to say. He said, well, people used to say, well, what is God like? What's the Father like? And Jesus said, if you've seen me, you've seen the Father. And you know, when Jesus gives us this gift, and as we behold him, when people want to come to us and say, what is Jesus like? And all we just say is, look at me. This is what he is. See, you see, Jesus was the exact replication of the Father. And as he empowers us and he gifts us with the power of the Holy Spirit, we take on his beauty. <laughs> I think that's a really good thing. In John 14, I just wrote all this stuff down. And I'm trying to make sure that I... Read my notes right because the Lord is showing me some good things this afternoon. But in John 14, in verse uh, 12, Jesus says, I tell you the truth, anyone who has faith in me will do what I've been doing. And he will do even greater things than these because I'm going to the Father. Now that's a good thing. That's a good thing right there. He wants us to do the things he does. He wants us to look like him. He wants us to think like him. He wants us to act like him. He wants us to represent him and his kingdom. And the only way he can do that is, is through the power of the Holy Spirit, in being, uh, us being Im immersed or baptized in this power and this glory. Apart from that, your education can't do it. All the study, all the going to church is not going to do it. But you need to receive power. Jesus said you'll receive power when the Holy Spirit comes upon you. And then we will become these effective witnesses that represent him fully as he is. That's the goal. <sighs> what I love about the book of Acts... It's a story of the disciples receiving what Jesus had 
in order to do what Jesus did. And that's the only way it can happen. Again, the book of Acts is the story of the disciples receiving what Jesus received in order to do what Jesus did. It's time for the church to receive all that Jesus had so we can do what he did. We need the Holy Spirit. I love this. In Acts 6, after Jesus ascended into heaven and the baptism was poured out at Pentecost, in Acts chapter 6, the church begins to look like Jesus. Actually, in, in uh, Acts chapter 5, it says, The apostles performed many miraculous signs and wonders among the people, and all the believers used to meet and gather at Solomon's colonnade, and no one else dared join them, even though they were highly regarded by the people. Nevertheless, more and more men and women believed in the Lord and were added to their number. As a result, people, uh, people brought the sick into the streets and, and laid them on beds and on mats so that Peter's shadow might fall on some of them as he passed by. Crowds gathered also from towns and uh, around Jerusalem, bringing their sick and those tormented by, by evil spirits, and all of them were healed. Isn't that amazing? Doesn't that sound like Jesus to you? Jesus healed them all. He did the exact same thing. He says, I'm going to give you what I have. I'm going I'm to give you power. And, and you're going to be my witnesses. And you're going to do what I've did, that I've done. And even greater things than these you will do. It wasn't just for the, the last apostles. How many know that? Amen. It's for you and me today. For those who will believe, for those who will receive the word, for those who say to Jesus, I want to be baptized by you. John baptized with water, but I want to be baptized by Jesus and receive power from on high. I need his anointing to do the calling that God has called me to do, the work that God's called me to do. I'm getting a little excited here. But the book of Acts describes people's experiences with the, with the Holy Spirit as they were uh, being empowered. And it says in Acts 2, 4, it says the people were filled with the Holy Spirit. In Acts 8, 17, it says they received the Holy Spirit. In Acts 10.44, it says the Holy Spirit fell on them. In Acts 10.45, it says they received the Holy Spirit. And in Acts 9, uh, 19, verse 6, it says the Holy Spirit came upon them. People, we need the Holy Spirit. I don't care how it comes. I, I, we need to be filled. We need to receive. We need the outpouring. We need the Holy Spirit to fall upon us. We need the Holy Spirit to come upon us again so we can be the church that Jesus prayed for yeah. in John 17. Amen. Come on. This is all part of the betrothal, people. We're preparing ourselves and making ourselves ready. In Genesis 2, verse 7, as Papa Gill has been sharing with us on Thursdays, I love this. It says, The Lord formed the man from the dust of the earth and breathed into his nostrils the breath of life, and he became a living being. But in John 20, 22, one of the scriptures the Lord showed me in this dream. It says, with that, Jesus breathed on them and said, and said receive the Holy Spirit. <laughs> Come on, you guys. Can't make this stuff up. See, the old creation began 
with the breath of God giving us life. And now the new creation begins with the breath of God's Son giving us power to do the supernatural works of the kingdom of God. See, there's life in the Spirit. When Jesus breathed on us, it was life. The Spirit is full of life. You know, it tells us in 2 Corinthians that the letter kills, but the Spirit gives life. Come, Holy Spirit. It tells us in Luke 24, 49, Jesus said, I'm going to send you what my father promised, but stay in the city until you've been clothed with power from on high. Again, Jesus, the bridegroom, wants his bride, us, to look like him, to think like him, and to act like him, to represent him fully. How many of you know that the Central Coast is positioned for a mighty move of God? We're positioned, you guys. <clears throat> we've had so much prayer, even though we've had COVID for two years, for the last three years, we've had nonstop prayer meetings. Calling in the prophetic destiny, the prophetic blueprints over the Central Coast and over Santa Maria. You know, in the spirit, the Lord has shown us and shown many that the Central Coast is a gate. Santa Maria is a gate. Chuck Pierce, when he was here, prophesied that California is the West Gate. A gate is another word for open heavens. In the natural, here on the Central Coast, we have Vandenberg Air Force Base, which is a command center. I remember Chuck Pierce and Dutch Sheets when they were here prophesied that this is a command center. And Vandenberg is where they launch rockets into the heavens. Two weeks ago, there was a launch on a Wednesday morning. We went out to watch it. You could see it. We watched this rocket go way up into the atmosphere. And then we watched it come down. And we watched it come all the way down. When Rick Wright was here last, he prophesied over us, John 1, 51, where Jesus says, I tell you the truth. You shall see heavens open. And the angels of God ascending and descending upon the Son of Man. And this is what God has for us, you guys, here on the Central Coast. We're a command center. Today, we're, we, we are a gate. We're an open heaven for the angels of God. Jesus said, pray my kingdom come. My will be done on earth as it is in heaven. I'm, I'm here to prophesy to you, heaven is coming to earth. There's about to be an invasion of, of kingdom, the atmosphere of kingdom in this place. And in all of the churches on the Central Coast, I really believe that. This is a place where things are going to go up and things are going to come down in the spirit. <clears throat> You know, it's our responsibility to keep the heavens open. Did you know that? And I've taught on this before, but I just want to remind you of how we keep the heavens open. In Luke 
chapter 3. At the time of Jesus' baptism, when John was baptizing Jesus, who didn't need to be baptized because his, John's baptism was a baptism of repentance and Jesus never sinned. Why was he being baptized? Have you ever thought about that? Jesus came to show us the way. He wanted, he wanted to experience and show for us and show and model for us how to live this Christian life and be victorious and empowered. And Jesus, as he was being baptized, it says, heaven was open. See, the first thing that Jesus, that came upon Jesus before he started his public ministry is Jesus had an open heaven. If Jesus needed an open heaven, how much more do we? <laughs> open heavens gives us revelation. Did you know that? Yeah. Jesus said, I only do what I see my father doing. How do we keep the heavens open? The Lord gave me a combination to open the heavens and to keep the heavens open. And I've taught this before, so I don't want to spend a lot of time on it. But there's three things that open the heavens and keep the heavens open. The first thing is gratefulness. An attitude of gratitude. How many know it's so important? It tells us in Psalms 100 that we enter the gate with thanksgiving. That begins to unlock the gate so we could get into the courtyard so we could begin to praise him. But how many know the goal is the glory? The holy of holies. But you can't even get into the courtyard without unlocking the gate. And what unlocks the gate is thanksgiving. An attitude of gratitude. Every day, thank you the Lord for all that he's done all that he's doing and all that he's about to do. There's so much. Make a list. Just make a list of what he's done for you personally. If you can't think of anything, thank him for somebody else's breakthrough. But there's something about gratitude begins to unlock the heavens. The second thing that unlocks the heavens is hunger and thirst. Jesus said, blessed are those who hunger and thirst after righteousness, for they will be filled and the Lord wants to come through an open heaven, pour out heaven upon us, and fill us. It's time to be filled to the fullness. Not just a portion of the Holy Spirit, but the fullness available on earth. I believe Peter, James, John, though they were filled to the fullest. How much of God do you want? There's so much more God has for us. We haven't seen anything yet. Don't come to that place called satisfaction. I'm satisfied. That's a dangerous place to be. Always be hungry for more. There's so much more that God has for us. And then the third thing that opens the heavens and keeps the heavens open is expectation. Again, how many know that your life's experiences will match your expectations? Low expectation will trap you in mediocrity and will keep you settling for less. Like when we came tonight, I didn't know the Lord was going to bring these people, Steve and, and Rosemary, but they had the word of the Lord for us to encourage us and edify us, and we want to follow the Holy Spirit. But God's going to bring people in and begin to speak to us more and more. There's going to be time when we come together and the heavens are open and nobody's going to preach, but the worship is going to prophesy and the angels of heaven are going to join and we're going to hear them singing. It's happened before. I refuse to, to, uh, to, come, just to have a, a, a style or, or, or predict what's going to happen in our services, you guys. Again, I don't want it to be predictable. Yeah. I don't want to quench the Holy Spirit. 
There's something so much better for us that we're entering into in this season. But if we do these three things, I believe we can keep the heavens open. And then it says in his baptism, the Holy Spirit descended on Jesus in the form of a dove. See, Jesus was empowered just like he wants to empower us. See, up until that time, he didn't have the power, but the, the Holy Spirit came on him and, and empowered him. Yeah. And then the third thing that happened at his baptism was sonship came upon him, identity, which released authority. This is my son, whom I'm well pleased. In the natural, in Santa Maria, we're sitting on a big aquifer. Did you know that? A water, huge lake. It, it's over the whole or under the whole valley, and it goes all the way to Arroyo Grande. <clears throat> this huge underground aquifer. You know, we drive over the Santa Maria Bridge and we look at the river. It looks like a dry riverbed. But I want to tell you something. That river is flowing, but it flows underground. It never stops flowing. You drive up the coast, not the coast, but you go east from here, follow the river up like by Tipiske, and go over the bridge. You can see that river's flowing. But at some, pl at some point, it goes underground under Santa Maria, and it reemerges on Main Street at the beach. You can see it. It comes out, and there's a, the river flows into the ocean. There's something prophetic about this, people. It's not an accident. Where we live in Napomo, we have the Napomo Dunes, you know, Oceano Dunes. And if you go hiking back in these dunes, you'll see these oases, these lakes that these springs are spring-fed in the middle of what looks like a, a, a Sahara Desert in those sand dunes. There's no streams, but there's, they're, 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 they, it bubbles up. You know, there's Black Lake, there's also Flocka Lake, there's many lakes, there's, there's dune lakes all over in the sand where you would think there would never, ever, ever be any water. And there's wildlife, so much wildlife in those sand dunes. And I grew up in those sand dunes. And I know, I spent a lot of time in those sand dunes, riding my horse through the sand dunes, hiking through the sand dunes. Even on the, on the driest years when there's a drought, when our reservoirs are down to 10%, 20%, 30%, even like they are now, those natural lakes in the dry place, in the sand dunes, are always, always at capacity because this aquifer, because these springs of water that spring up in the dry places, you guys. Oh, you guys need to take a hike. No, I don't leave. <clears throat> but one of these days, how many know that God speaks through creation to us? The natural speaks of the invisible. He always speaks to us through nature. And these lakes are teeming with wildlife. Fish. People, you're not even supposed to go in there fishing, but people sneak in to fish. I used to sneak in a long time ago. <sighs> But there's deer, and there's bear, and there's mountain lion. There's, there's so much wildlife in these oases in the back in the dunes. Why? Because there's the life. Living waters of life are bubbling up in the dry places. Right here on the central coast, this is all in the natural. And John... 414, Jesus said, whoever, 
drink the water I give, whoever drinks the water I give him will never thirst again. Indeed, the water I give him will become in him a spring of water welling up into eternal life. He goes on to say, if you knew the gift of God and who it is that asks you for a drink, you would ask him and he would have given you living water. And so the Holy Spirit is an aquifer uh, in us. It's an artesian well within us, welling up out of us. And the Holy Spirit is not only uh, falling upon us, but he's also springing up from within us. It's time, you guys. It's time to start drinking from the living waters of life. Am I making sense tonight? That's good. <laughs> I hate it when I don't make sense. Isaiah 55, verse 1. It says, Come, all you who are thirsty, come to the waters. How many of you are thirsty tonight? See, that's what it takes. Blessed are those who hunger and thirst. I want to tell you something in this new season that we've in, that we've entered into, that we stepped over the line, out of the old and into the new. The blessings of God are going to fall upon the hungry like we've never seen before. The undistracted, the ones who are preparing themselves for the bridegroom. Get ready, you guys. Get ready. The Lord's going to give you to drink living waters of life. Put away distraction. Step over and step into what God has for us in this season. In Revelations twenty two seventeen, 17, it says, The Spirit and the bride say, Come. And let him who hears say, Come. And it says, Whoever is thirsty, let him come. And whoever wishes, let him take the free gift of the water of life. In John 7, thirty-seven it says, On the last and greatest day of the feast, Jesus stood and said in a loud voice, If anyone is thirsty, let him come to me and drink. Whoever believes in me, as the scriptures have said, streams of living water will flow from within him. And by this he meant the spirit um, whom those who, the, who, who believed uh, were later to receive. Up to that time, the spirit had not been given since Jesus had not been glorified. People, the natural is speaking of the invisible over the central coast and over Santa Maria. Our reservoirs are empty. The aquifer is full. Oh, the lakes are bubbling up. The natural lakes are bubbling up in the sand dunes where there is no water. Come on, there's a supernatural thing happening. There's the heavens are open over us, you guys. We are God's command center here. The angels of God are ascending and descending on the Son of Man in this place right now because we because we determined to make this a house of the Lord. Heaven is my, my throne. Uh, earth is my footstool. Where is the house you will build for me? Where will my resting place be? We say right here in Santa Maria. Right here at the Healing Rooms Apostolic Center. We say, let your kingdom come. Let your will be done here as it is in heaven. Lord, let heaven come and let the Holy Spirit erupt and bubble up from within us. We pray, Lord. We just pray. We just pray that in the name of Jesus. You know, as night show comes down and glycerin comes up, there's a mighty explosion. There's a powerful explosion 
And that's, what, and that's the power of God for the end time church, people. I honest to God believe that. So many of us have had a portion of the Holy Spirit. Again, I heard the Lord say, ask him again, how much do you want? It's up to you. How much of the Holy Spirit do you want? How much of the gift from the bridegroom do you want? Do you want a measure, a small amount, or do you want the fullness? I've got to have it all. I'm going for the gold. I don't know about you, man. I'm going for it. Can you imagine what will happen if we all decided to do that as a staff? Just go for it. Oh, man, something's, something's about to shake loose here on the Central Coast. I'm, I'm telling you, man. And so Jesus is asking, is anyone thirsty? Are you thirsty tonight? Yeah. I want to invite the worship team to come back. I think, you know, in this season we're at, we need to respond to what the Lord is speaking to us and saying to us. It's not enough in this season, you guys, like David was saying, uh, just to listen to the worship team. We have to enter in because our worship is warfare. It's defeating our enemies. And it's not enough just to hear a message and go home. But we need to activate what God is saying to us and I just want to invite you if, you, if you're hungry, there's a call right now. If you're hungry, come to the waters, the living waters of life. Come and drink. Come to Jesus. And I just, and I just want to invite you. Get out in the aisles. Come up front as we worship. And, uh, and let the Lord pour out upon you. Let him pour out his spirit on you. And I just want to read this again. Some of you are going to be filled, refilled tonight. Some of you are going to receive tonight the Holy Spirit. And the Holy Spirit's going to be poured out on some of you. And some of you, the Holy Spirit's going to fall on. And some of you, the Holy Spirit's going to come on. And listen, it takes those who are really thirsty. And so how, again, I've heard the Lord three times, ask him again, how thirsty are you? How much of me, how much of God do you want? So let's just respond to the Lord in our worship tonight. Amen? Amen. Go for it. We are hungry, we are hungry, we are hungry for more of you. We are thirsty, oh Jesus, we are thirsty for more of you. We are hungry, we are hungry, we are hungry for more of you. We are thirsty, oh Jesus, we are thirsty for more of you. Yes, we are. Yes, we are. Yes, we are. Yes, we are.
I want 
tonight. Revelation is falling on you tonight. Dreams are happening. Dreams are being released in this place right now on the sons and the daughters, on all flesh. Just receive it right now. Receive right now visions and dreams. Receive the prophetic right now. It's a gift. The Father wants to speak to us. He wants to show us what He's doing in heaven. So do it again, Lord, we pray. Do it again. Speak to us from heaven. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. And as the Lord is going to give you dreams, you want to hear about these dreams, let us know what the Lord is showing you through dreams. Let us know the revelation you're receiving, the visions that God shows you. They're important. So we want to hear what God is saying to us. Amen. So, Lord, we thank you for the Holy Spirit. Thank you for this gift, this precious gift of the Holy Spirit. Empower us. 
for what's coming and what's already here, we pray. Thank you, Lord, for tonight. Thank you, Lord, for all that you've done tonight, all that you've activated tonight. We say we'll never be the same after tonight. We purpose our, ourselves to step in and over the line, out of the old and into the new. It's a new season. Thank you, Lord. In Jesus' name, amen. Thank you, Lord. Hey, thanks for joining us online. We'd love to know where you're watching from or how we can pray for you. So please let us know in the comments and be sure to share this content with your friends. Also, if you want prayer or prophetic encouragement, we offer free ministry available on a first come, first serve basis on our website. Be sure to check the description of this video for more information. Thanks for watching and we hope to see you again soon. Here's a word from some of our other ministries. Hey everybody, it's Pastor David Kingsley reminding you, this week is The Pulse. Every third Friday at 6.30, come on out. Have your expectation ready. Remember, faith is the substance of things hoped for. Wherever you're expecting is where your faith is going. See everybody this Friday. Shalom. Do you want to see God heal through you? Join us for an upcoming weekend training to be equipped, trained, and commissioned to join our healing teams here at the Healing Rooms in Santa Maria. This local two-day in-person seminar will be jam-packed with teachings, Q&A, and activation, so you'll be confident to minister God's healing here on a healing team. To learn more about this training, please look at the description below. We look forward to seeing you there. As disciples of Jesus, it's vital that we study God's Word and start activating it in our daily lives. I'd like to invite you to Equip Nights, where our goal is to equip you for a life of impact and purpose. We're going to be diving into key subjects like your new identity, your authority in Christ, and the power of prayer, and many more. With the help of qualified teachers and an amazing course book, you're going to see some real results. These courses will be five sessions long, taking place once a week during the evenings, making them accessible for those who are working. For more information, please check out the description link below. Are you ready to change the culture of your marriage? We'd love to have you at the next set of Bridge Marriage Trucks. And it's not just for troubled marriages, it's for hurting to healthy and everyone in between. Also, for singles, dating, and engaged couples mm -hmm. who just want to learn about marriage from a biblical perspective. We would love to see you guys there. Yep.